There's a lake in the heart of Asia that holds one-fifth of all the world's liquid freshwater. It's more than all the five great lakes have together. Even if all the rivers on our planet suddenly changed their direction and set on a mission to drain this lake, it would take them a whole year to finish the job. I'm talking about the deepest lake in the world, Lake Baikal. If you decide to go all the way down to its deepest point, prepare for a journey of almost 5,400 feet. The descent takes several hours, but the rift floor of the lake is way deeper, between 5 to 7 miles beneath the surface. It means it could be even further down than the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest known place on Earth. The amount of water it has would be enough for everyone on Earth to have something to drink for up to 50 years. This mighty giant of a lake replenishes its water completely every 383 years. Baikal has a great delivery crew of over 300 rivers and streams, bringing their waters right in. And only one river flows out of Baikal the Angara, which is headed straight for the Arctic Ocean. Baikal isn't only the deepest, but also the oldest existing freshwater lake in the world. It formed at least 25 million years ago. It all began when the Earth's crust decided to play Tetris and created the lake and the surrounding mountains. At some point, Baikal must have been just a humble riverbed. But then, tremors and fractures shook the Earth, and the distance between the shores got bigger. Water levels rose thanks to the melting glaciers. Then, several lakes formed and later merged into one. Baikal is one of around 20 lakes in the world that are older than 1 million years. And since it wasn't disturbed by glacial periods, it's a perfect research ground for scientists. Its deep drilled core sediments can tell a lot about the climate of our planet in different periods. Since Baikal is in a rift basin with 2,000 seismic tremors per year, the lake is deepening and still growing in size. Its shores drift apart at around the same rate as South America and Africa are moving away from each other, so it has all the potential to become an ocean. Another thing Baikal has in common with the oceans is that it has water rich in oxygen, even at its lowest depths. This is one of the reasons why the fauna of the lake is so incredibly rich. It's home to over two and a half thousand various animals and 1,000 plant varieties. Around half of them are unique and only exist in this area, like the endemic algae, the Baikal omul fish, and the Baikal oil fish. There are also some bears, elk, and lynx living on its shores. They must appreciate the fact that the temperatures around the lake are always higher than the rest of Siberia, thanks to its huge water mass. Most Baikal dwellers prefer to stick to the bottom of the lake, but there's one brave guy you'll meet if you decide to visit. Meet the Baikal seal, also known as Nerpa. It's the only true freshwater seal in the world. Nerpa's eyes are so cute it nearly landed the part of Puss in Boots in Shrek. Nerpa in Boots sounds good to me. These huge eyes are there to help them follow their favorite pelagic fish underwater. There are other seal kinds that can handle fresh water or use it to breathe, but these cuties spend their entire lives in it. But wait, how did seals, which are supposed to be oceanic creatures, end up in a lake miles and miles away from the sea? About 400,000 years ago, during the Pleistocene era, these adventurous creatures traveled up the river and drainage systems that connected Lake Baikal to the Arctic Ocean. The ringed seal that still lives in the Arctic is believed to be the Baikal seal's closest ancestor. Today, Baikal seals are confined to their freshwater home because of the changes in waterways. And they seem to be pretty happy with their home as they can choose from a huge variety of food to eat. The seals mostly hang out in the north and central areas of the lake, but move south in the winter. The lake gets covered with ice, which they use as a chill-out zone, just like their oceanic cousins use rocks or the beach. Since at least 1969, Lake Baikal has had some mysterious ice rings pop up randomly here and there. At some point, they got so big that the astronauts even spotted them from space. 
The rings usually appear in late April, but can be there in January or May. Scientists couldn't crack the code on how these rings form for a while. They had all sorts of theories, and the most popular involved methane gas bubbles from the lake's depths. But then, scientists noticed that some of the rings were in shallower waters, where gas emissions don't happen. So, an international team of scientists decided to solve the mystery. They traveled to Lake Baikal, drilled holes in the ice, and dropped sensors into the water. In 2016, when they started the research, they heard that two vans had gotten stuck in the mysterious ice rings. Once they had analyzed the data from the sensors, it turned out that the secret behind the rings was warm eddies flowing clockwise under its ice cover. The currents were less intense in the center of the eddies, so the ice above them was thicker at the edges. The waters of the lake are so clear that you can see some extremely deep parts up to over 130 feet down. This is thanks to the surrounding mountains that send off melting ice right in. Plankton that live in the lake also helps clean the floating debris. When this crystal clear water freezes, it forms an unusually thick and see-through layer of ice. The wind likes to play sculptor on Baikal and creates one-of-a-kind pieces of art here. It picks up water, which, of course, freezes into the most unusual designs. Frozen bubbles and icicles you've never seen before. The location and geography of the lakes and the cycles of melting and refreezing create the perfect conditions for this ice workshop. And you can even see rocks that seem to be floating. The bottom of the rock freezes to the surface of the ice. Then, the strong winds wear away the surroundings, leaving a perfect pedestal for the rock. If you think the floating rocks look eerie, how about Baikal's version of the Loch Ness Monster? The local Buryat people have a legend about the water dragon master that lives in the lake. A dragon is believed to be the most powerful creature living on Earth in Asian mythology. They believe there are four dragons living in the four seas, each responsible for one of the cardinal directions. Baikal is the North Sea in this story. The image of this dragon is supposedly etched in ancient petroglyphs on the cliffs of Baikal. There's also a hefty stone slab that looks like a monument dated back to somewhere between the 3rd and the 9th century BCE, depicting a mysterious water monster. Imagine the stories this stone could tell, echoing the whispers of a bygone era and leaving us to unravel the enigma of the Baikal Cliffs. The legend says that a local warrior was chasing the dragon, he finally reached the largest Baikal island of Alkan. He was ready to face and defeat the dragon, but the beast turned into a beautiful girl, and they got married. That's one unusual twist to a classic defeat the dragon and take the girl story. So, local legends describe that dragon as a giant sturgeon with an almost gator-like snout and armored body. In reality, the mythical monster must be one of the many huge fish living in the lake. They can afford to grow to several feet in length thanks to the high levels of oxygen in the water. Beluga sturgeon can weigh several thousands of pounds, lives up to 50 or 60 years, and never stops growing. You can find many picturesque lakes in Louisiana, but one of them stands out among all the others. This deep lake is calm and beautiful, but its origin is closely connected with the story of a large-scale disaster that changed the entire ecosystem. A catastrophe that people managed to miraculously survive. And this disaster happened because of a mistake of just one person. To discover the incredible history of Lake Pinor, let's move back in time to more than 40 years ago. So it's 1980, early morning of November the 21st. Several workers start their shift. They continue searching for oil. A drill on an oil rig in the middle of the small Lake Pinor is an important part of this process. The depth of this lake is about 11 feet. If a grown-up person stands on its bottom and raises their hands, their fingers will reach the surface of the water. Everything goes without problems at first, but then the drill stops. It seems to have jammed at the bottom. Workers try to free the drill, but they can't do it. The engine gets overloaded and people hear a few pops coming from below. 
At this moment, the entire rig begins to lean toward the water. The workers on the platform realize that something terrible is happening, so they run to the shore. A strong rumble comes next. The colossal $5 million drilling rig, with a height of a 15-story building, is slowly sinking into the water. But the lake's depth is no greater than a one-story building. How is it possible? Imagine the water leaving your bathtub through the drain hole. The same thing is happening to the lake now. The drill has punched a small hole in the walls of a salt mine, whose tunnels run through the rock under the lake. And now, millions of gallons of water are pouring into these tunnels. The created pressure is 10 times as great as that in a fire hydrant stream. The miners find out about the disaster. While the water is flooding the tunnels, they're trying to evacuate from the mine. 50 people are making their way through the water and mud using mine carts. A slow elevator can only lift eight people at a time. It takes seven approaches to evacuate all the miners. Can you imagine how the people at the end of the line feel? The devastating flood is behind you, and several dozen people and one slow elevator are ahead. Fortunately, all the people manage to escape. The water displaces the air from the mine, compressing it. First, it breaks through all the tunnels, and then it comes out from the ground in the form of geysers. But the disaster doesn't end there. A large funnel forms in the middle of the lake. The hole is expanding, pulling more water inside. The land around the lake begins to crumble and fall into the mine. Along with the soil, the funnel pulls in 11 barges, a tugboat, the entire oil platform, and many trees. The whole beach around the lake disappears. There's so much water in the salt cave that the direction of the flow of the nearest river changes. Now, not only the lake, but also the water from the surrounding area is flooding the mine. The funnel is expanding. From the side, you can see the formation of a massive waterfall with a height of 164 feet. This is the height of a 16-story building. At this moment, it's the highest waterfall in Louisiana. Fortunately, the destruction doesn't last long. Two days have passed. The mine is completely flooded. The funnel has disappeared. The water calms down. Several days ago, it was a shallow lake. Now it has a new bottom, located at a depth of 200 feet. This changes the ecosystem forever. New species of fish and animals appear there. The drilling company paid a fine of $45 million to compensate for the damage to all flooded enterprises. Of course, people investigated the cause of this disaster. It turned out that the engineer made a mistake in the maps. He used incorrect calculations to select the drilling coordinates and got to the salt mine. There is another lake with a huge funnel inside, and it's also artificial. But this time, people created it on purpose. Welcome to California, to Lake Berryessa. Previously, there was a small farming town of Monticello near the lake. In the last century, people built a dam here. But during the rainy season, the water level in the lake rose and poured over the dam's edges. Water flooded the land and washed away roads. You need to make the dam even higher to solve the problem, right? This is quite logical, but the town's engineers thought of something better. They dug a hole near the lake and covered its insides with concrete. It looks like a wide circular tunnel leading into the ground. During the rainy season, the level of the water rises high enough to reach the pit, and millions of gallons of water pour into it. It resembles a giant drain hole in the bathroom. All the water entering the hole travels through a horizontal tunnel and gets into the nearest bay. This is an effective and practical invention and an excellent attraction for many tourists. Skateboarders also like to hang out here. When the water level is low, they gather at the bay, near the place where the water flows out. The round tunnel is an excellent playground for skateboarding. We're moving to the desert of Yemen. There, we're also looking for a hole, but without a lake this time. This hole, the size of a basketball court, is in the middle of the desert. Scientists still don't know what's at the bottom of the hole or what formed it. But the locals are sure 
This pit is a portal to the underground world where evil spirits live. Even if you don't believe in all this, the giant hole in Yemen can still scare you. Sometimes, strange, frightening sounds come from the depth of this black abyss. And there's always an unpleasant smell of rotten eggs wafting out of there. The hole is so dark, it absorbs sunlight. You won't see anything, even if you point a flashlight inside. People have studied this place with the help of powerful optical lenses and drones, but they couldn't see anything except the frightening darkness. From a distance, this place looks like a blob of black paint in the middle of a golden sandy canvas. Even now, the giant hole in Yemen is one of the most poorly studied and mysterious places on Earth. But recently, a group of brave people got down to its bottom. They found stalactites, snakes, and even waterfalls there. Scientists are trying to figure out how the hole appeared and how old it is. Some say that the hole was caused by construction works when geologists were drilling the soil in search of minerals. The drilling process made the surface of the ground collapse. And now let's visit another famous hole hidden under a huge amount of water. It's the Mariana Trench. This is the deepest pit on Earth, located in the Western Pacific Ocean near the Mariana Islands. It's so deep, it can fit one and a half Everests. To dive to the bottom, you need special equipment that can withstand intense water pressure. It should be a sturdy bath escape with an ample supply of oxygen. It's expensive, but the trip is worth it. In the Mariana Trench, you can meet unique, strange creatures you will never see on the surface or in some other region of the ocean. Toxic crayfish and microorganisms feeding on a substance that looks like oil live here. You can meet fish with transparent bodies and see their organs and skeleton. Creepy, toothy monsters similar to anglerfish can swim by. These creatures seem fragile and harmless. But look at yourself. You're inside a bath escape made of alloys of several metals. Water pressure can turn an ordinary car into flatbread here. And these fish with transparent bodies swim as if they're just hanging out in the pool. Hmm. On the outside, the surface of this lake looks like the aftermath of a disaster. Empty tree trunks spike out of the turquoise waters. The lake is surrounded by mountains, making it a quiet but unsettling place. But those who dare to swim under these dangerous waters will soon discover a whole new world. This isn't the beginning of a fairy tale. It's the actual story of Kayindi Lake, located in Sati, Kazakhstan. Back in 1911, an earthquake caused a major landslide in this location. The valley created eventually filled up with rainwater, practically submerging the forest. The trees that are located above the waters might look very sad, but beneath the surface, they remind you of an underwater forest. Since the waters are crystal clear most of the time, you can still see this fascinating view even from its shores. The ice-cold water makes this lake so tricky and, at times, even dangerous. And don't forget about all the algae, plants, and submerged trees that can rapidly become risky obstacles. Hey, I enjoy a steamy hot bath, but this boiling lake I'll tell you about now is really the stuff of scary dreams. It's located on the Caribbean island of Dominica, and its waters have temperatures between 180 and 197 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's just around the edges, since no one has ever dared to reach the middle of the lake to measure its core temperature. It's true that the heat can go down from time to time, but you never know when these waters may start to boil again. The place is also dangerous because of the gases it releases, such as carbon dioxide. It doesn't smell nice, trust me, but that's mostly because of the sulfur stuck in the steamy air. This seemingly calm lake also carries a dangerous surprise. Lake Manan, located in West Province, Cameroon, it's one of the few erupting lakes on the whole planet similar to a volcano, and most of the time, it does so without any warnings. Its last eruption dates back to 1894, when it caused serious damage. The chemical mechanism of such lakes works like a can of soda that you shake before opening. There are risky gases on the bottom of the waters, so any disturbance on the surface may trigger their eruption. Natron Lake in Tanzania may be beautiful to watch because of its unique reddish coloring. But it's definitely not a place you'd want to take a swim in. 
while the water is extremely salty. It also combines with algae, which, by the way, are responsible for the coloring. And that's not even the riskiest thing about it. Natron Lake has pH levels so high that they become corrosive. If you dampen a piece of dyed material in this lake, it'll soon be stripped of its color. These high levels of acidity can also cause serious problems to the human skin. It's not all bad for some creatures, as Lake Natron is the only home to over 2.5 million small flamingos. These acidic and brackish waters support their survival, so it's no wonder they like to stick around. Lake Nicaragua's danger factor has less to do with chemistry and more to do with its inhabitants. It's located on the border of Costa Rica and Nicaragua and is the largest freshwater lake in Central America. When you first look at it, you won't think it can be dangerous. But because of the bull sharks inhabiting it, I wouldn't recommend taking a swim. Sharks tend to be unpredictable and at times intimidating creatures. Plus, they will eat everything if needed. Scientists initially believed this species of shark was only found in this lake. But they soon discovered that people had seen the same sharks in the Caribbean Sea. These astonishing creatures not only cross a distance of over 120 miles to get here, but can also adapt to freshwater, something not all fish can do. Belize's Great Blue Hole may seem alluring to divers. I mean, it has a gorgeous deep blue color and is pretty close to the mainland, about 62 miles. The problem is that beneath the surface of these tranquil waters is a mixed-up series of tunnels which contain many types of coral and other wildlife. These caves are what makes diving through the Great Blue Hole tricky. More so, specialists discover that deeper into the waters, there are fewer and fewer creatures. Why? Because of a hidden layer of hydrogen sulfide that spans over the whole width of the sinkhole. Since there's no oxygen, no creature can ever survive this deep into the hole. Lake Lanier is the largest lake in the state of Georgia. It has a lot of visitors each year, about 11 million, so that's about the same number as visiting the Louvre Museum in Paris. Despite its popularity, a lot of accidents happen on this lake, and nobody knows for sure why. One of the explanations may lie beneath the surface of this mysterious lake. There's a lot of debris and rubble in there, along with random objects that have been tossed in, like boats, lawn chairs, and even fishing wire. All this creates a tricky underwater obstacle course. With the added low visibility on the surface of the lake, this place can become risky to navigate. Another one of those lakes that looks like someone might have overdone with editing is the Grand Prismatic Spring, located in Yellowstone National Park, which stretches into the states of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. Swimming here is completely prohibited. Why? It's 189 degrees Fahrenheit in the center, almost close to boiling temperatures, and the outermost ring reaches around 131, hence the colors. Since the center of the water is way too hot for any life to make it, there's nothing clouding the surface. The lack of any living organisms here creates that vivid blue that looks almost painted over. On the small Mediterranean island of Cyprus, there's not a lot of rain during the summer. That's why some bodies of water here become so dry that in certain areas, they get covered in a layer of baked salt. It's the case for the Larnaca Salt Lake. Now, don't be fooled by the eerie landscape. These lands can easily become a trap. That's because it's easy to get confused about what's actually a dry surface and what's just a thin layer of salt on top of water or mud. More so, underneath the crust are salt crystals, which can cause problems for people's skin. Samisen Hole is one of the most dangerous places to swim in the whole of Thailand. It's because it's very deep, reaching 280 feet, and gets extremely dark. At certain points, as divers get lower, they can even reach places with zero visibility. No wonder a lot of people get confused and can't seem to find their way up anymore. The largest lake in Africa and the third largest lake in the entire world is called Lake Victoria. Not all of its waters are unsafe for people, but some regions can rapidly cause problems. Why? Particularly because it has its own isolated weather system, and that makes the weather really unreliable. It can go from bright and sunny to terrible in a matter of seconds. I mean, who would want to get caught swimming in the middle of a storm, right? Pustoyi Lake is located in Siberia, 
So I'm guessing I don't need to tell you the waters here get extremely cold. But if you look at the lake, there's nothing out of the ordinary with these waters. Hmm, is that completely true? Eh, most likely not. And people tend to avoid swimming here at all costs, even if they can resist the freezing cold waters. So what makes Lake Postovi so mysterious and dangerous? Well, nothing seems to want to live here, and scientists have yet to discover why. They tried to fill the lake with many types of fish and various plant species to see if they could survive in the waters, but the results were hmm, disappointing. Since we don't know exactly what makes it so difficult to survive here, don't go running for your swimming trunks just yet. It's best if you stay away. Hey, you don't have to tell me twice. A strange lake appeared in India 52,000 years ago. It was formed here literally out of nowhere. I recall it was a Wednesday. Anyway, for tens of thousands of years, people came up with various scary stories about the lake. Some locals believe this place was cursed. Others think that the lake's bottom hides the gateway to the underworld. But those are all legends. The real reason for the appearance of this Lonar Lake is even more surprising. At first, scientists were sure that the lake was an ancient crater of a long-extinct volcano. It's in a balsam field made of 65-million-year-old volcanic rock. But then, geologists conducted a detailed analysis of the soil and water, and found that Lonar Lake had a space origin. Geologists found a unique glass inside the lake that forms only with a strong impact and energy release. 52,000 years ago, a huge meteorite weighing 2 million tons fell into this place. It was almost six times heavier than the Empire State Building. The striking power was so high that the volcanic rock melted and turned into glass. Perhaps the bottom of this lake still contains particles of this giant meteorite that flew to us from the distant space depths. Okay, we have a lake created by a space object more than 50,000 years ago. But even this is not the strangest thing about it. In 2020, the locals noticed that Lonar Lake had turned pink. In just a few days, the salt water mysteriously changed its color. Biologists and geologists immediately took water samples to the Scientific Research Center. The detailed analysis showed that the water contained an increased level of unique microbes. They accumulate on the surface and emit some pink pigment. Soon, these microbes settled to the bottom, and the lake became transparent again. Also, rains help the water go back to its usual appearance. These microbes color the lake and make the pink plumage of flamingos even brighter. The birds get food from the Lonar Lake and absorb these pink bacteria. Now, Lonar Lake is a popular place among tourists. But this is not the only thing that may surprise you in India. Our next stop is a small village with about 2,600 people located in a hot rainforest. The locals are very hospitable. They welcome not only tourists, but also one of the most venomous reptiles on the planet. King cobras are crawling in almost every house in this village. Locals are happy to see them as if they were their pets. People share water and food with these animals. They even give the reptiles a special corner where they can relax from the scorching sun. Ah, Cobras crawl in houses, schools, and even on the streets. Humans and reptiles are used to each other and feel safe. There has never been a case of a cobra attack in the village. It's the only place in the world where these venomous reptiles live in such harmony with people. Now, imagine a town that consists of many little united villages. The residents are all engaged in agriculture. They know how to extract water from ground rocks, and they bargain well. The town has been thriving for several centuries, and people live happily in it. Then, one day, everything changes. All the residents quickly pack up their stuff and run away from their homes. Overnight, the town becomes abandoned. It is a real story that happened in the state of Rajasthan in 1825. And still, no one knows why the people disappeared from there. The most popular version says that the cruel local ruler collected large taxes from the locals. Then he fell in love with the daughter of the chief of this town and threatened that he would collect extra taxes if the girl refused to be his wife. Citizens decided to support the woman and her father and left their homes in one day. This town is still empty, but the locals from the nearest cities are afraid to approach. 
Our next stop is the state of Maharashtra. There's a small village there with very positive people. They go to stores, cafes, schools, and banks. Everything here seems quite ordinary, and you wouldn't notice what's so special about this place. But just wait for the night to come. People go to sleep and no one locks their houses. There are no locks at all in this village. The door of any building is always open here. The owners leave the shops, cafes, and libraries open. When locals go to work, they don't lock up their homes either. They don't hide money and jewelry. The reason for this is the complete absence of thefts. The villagers are sure that anyone can get into serious trouble for stealing. According to a legend, about 300 years ago, after prolonged rains and floods, a large black stone slab appeared in the center of the village. This slab symbolized an Indian mythical creature that watched over the locals. At some point, people stopped locking their houses because they knew that no one would dare to commit theft in that creature's face. In 2015, a police station was opened here, but almost no one has reported an incident since then. The building doesn't even have doors because the police don't keep anyone there. Another fantastic place in India is a village in the state of Assam. Hundreds of locals prepare here for an unusual celebration every now and then. They arrange a magnificent wedding ceremony. They set the table, dress up in beautiful costumes, and bring gifts. And all this for the newlyweds. But instead of people, frogs get married here. Locals hold weddings for wild frogs to summon rain. The incredible thing is that the ceremony looks just like a real wedding. The fun can last all day until late at night. Now, there's one dangerous and inaccessible island in India. You can find it in the Bay of Bengal. It's called the North Sentinel. It's a small piece of land that looks like a tropical paradise. But you won't be able to get there. Since 1956, nobody can travel to this place. The Coast Guard is always sailing around and patrolling the area. The reason for this is the local Sentinelese tribe. This tribe lives isolated from the whole world. They don't know about modern technologies, the internet, or television. For centuries, the Sentinelese have lived on their own, away from civilization. And the people from India want to keep it that way. Anyone who approaches their island is welcomed by the tribe with a flurry of spears and arrows. And it doesn't matter if you're coming by boat or helicopter. Another reason why you can't get on the island is the Sentinelese immune system. The Coast Guard is trying to protect the local tribe from possible diseases and infections that outsiders can bring with them. The locals have no immunity from the flu or even a simple cold. They don't know what that is. Also, there are coral reefs and limestone around the island, which significantly complicates the passage of large ships. Despite all the prohibitions, many people tried to get to the island. In 1880, one officer accidentally discovered this island. He went ashore and found a noble soil ideal for growing coconut palms. The officer also noticed several huts on the island, but didn't dare meet the locals. Explorers and travelers presented the islanders with fish as a gift many times. The locals accepted it, asked for more, but still didn't let them approach their houses. It was also challenging to make friends with the tribe because they communicate in one of the most difficult languages to learn in the world. Scientists and linguists have been studying this language for decades. At the end of the 20th century, outsiders made some progress in building a connection with the tribe. In 1991, a team of anthropologists invited the islanders aboard a large ship. They gave bags of coconuts to tribe members. This may be where the phrase, left holding the bag, came from. Or not. Otherwise, let's just leave these folks alone, shall we? You're walking along a hot desert under the scorching sun. You run out of supplies. There's no more water. You dream about rain, but there are no clouds in the sky. With each step, you lose more and more strength and fall. You notice a small pond nearby. Is it real water or just a mirage? You can't get to your feet, so you crawl there. The water is getting closer by the minute, but not because you're moving towards it. It's the water approaching you. In a few minutes, the pond area increases. Here, you're already in it. 
a small lake has formed, 60 feet deep, at the place where the piece of desert was. This real event happened in 2014 in the Tunisian desert. No one knows exactly on what day the lake appeared, since this part of the south of Tunisia is sparsely populated. And first, shepherds passing by saw the lake and didn't believe their eyes. In the next few hours, hundreds of locals came running to the place. They began to swim, jumping into the water from the surrounding rocks. But a few days later, something strange happened to the lake. In the beginning, it was a crystal clear, turquoise blue color, but then it turned dark green. People didn't attach any importance to this and continued to swim. They shouldn't have done that. The scientists and geologists arrived and immediately announced that it wasn't safe to swim in the lake. Muddy green water means the lake is stagnating. It's not refreshed, it's not fed by underground springs. Now the lake is filled with algae and a lot of harmful bacteria that can cause serious diseases. They also found out that this region of Tunisia is filled with huge deposits of phosphate. This substance can disintegrate and leave radioactive traces. The lake can be carcinogenic, toxic, and hazardous for any living organism. But people didn't worry about this too much. They walk in the middle of the desert, while the sun heats the air to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Most of them are unlikely to refuse to jump into cool water, despite the warnings of scientists. Until now, no one knows exactly the reason for the appearance of the lake. Some scientists believe the lake was formed because of heavy rains. The lake is surrounded by rocks and is located inside a canyon. The water could just accumulate after each storm. Some geologists think an earthquake was the cause of the lake. A small seismic activity provoked the rupture of the Earth's rock above the water table. And through this hole, all the water splashed out. And if this theory is correct, then the lake can be pulled back underground through cracks. This is the same as when you pull the plug out of a drain hole in a filled bathtub. Any small earthquake is like pulling the plug out. Therefore, if you find yourself in these places, don't swim in this radioactive lake. We're going to the Caribbean Islands region. Among the clear blue sea, you can find a unique lake. It's located on one of the paradisical islands. You may not even notice the lake right away. The entire territory may seem like a huge concrete platform, but the main thing is not to step on its surface. Pitch Lake is a lake filled not with water, but with liquid asphalt. This is the largest asphalt deposit in the world. Steam is coming from all over the lake as it's hot. The depth of this lake is 250 feet. An entire passenger Boeing could fit there in an upright position. The lake is not fully studied, but scientists believe there's a deep fault in the Earth's crust under it. A huge amount of oil seeps through it. It passes through various chemical compounds and turns it into the asphalt. According to rough estimates, there are about 10 million tons of hot material inside this place. Theoretically, no life can exist in such conditions, but scientists have discovered a colony of microbes. Somehow these creatures have learned to survive here. This also suggests that life outside of our planet may exist. The largest moon of Saturn, Titan, has many hydrocarbon lakes on the surface. And if the simplest forms of life appeared among a million tons of molten asphalt here on Earth, then nothing prevents them from appearing on Titan. We're going to Indonesia, to the island of Java. You need to climb a large volcano to see the next phenomenon. The volcano is overgrown with grass and trees, but it doesn't seem to be sleeping. Smoke is pouring out of its mouth. You climb to the top and see a clear lake instead of boiling magma. The blue sky is reflected in its bright turquoise surface. But don't try to jump there. This lake is filled with acid. The magma inside volcanoes comes from the deep bowels of the Earth's crust. The incandescent liquid consists of many molten metals and chemical compounds, and the lake is filled with particles of these metals. In addition, the volcano emits sulfur dioxide gases. When they combine with metals, they form a beautiful turquoise color. You'd better come back here at night. In some places, a lot of sulfur is concentrated. These accumulations come out of the lake and come into contact with the air. When this happens, everything around bursts into bright blue flame. It's safe to observe this from the side, but don't get too close. Nearby, on this island, there's another acid lake. 
it also releases sulfurous gases into the air, which are easily ignited when in contact with oxygen. And when this happens, the gases burst into a bright blue electric flame. It's difficult to see the flames during the day. At night, you can see these flashes from afar. Our next location is Australia. You start the drone high above the forest area. Among the green dense forests, you can see a bright pink spot. It's our lake. This time, the beautiful pink color may not stop you from swimming. You can relax here and take beautiful photos. The lake attracts thousands of tourists, but scientists have only recently been able to find out the reason for the unusual color. At the bottom of this salty lake in Melbourne, special algae grow and secrete a red pigment. In combination with sunlight, high temperatures, and a small amount of precipitation, it turns the lake pink. By the way, Australia is not the only place with such a phenomenon. There are lakes with a pink tinge of water all over the world. You can find them in Senegal, Bolivia, Kenya, and many other countries. The water of these places is also salty and contains the red pigment of unusual algae. We leave the hot beaches and fly to cold Canada. Here, we see a frozen Lake Abraham. We step on the ice and notice huge frozen bubbles inside. They resemble jellyfish, and there are thousands of them there. This is methane. It's a highly flammable substance. The grass, leaves, pieces of trees, and any organic substances that fall into the lake become food for a lot of bacteria that emit methane. Upon contact with frozen water, methane turns into tens of thousands of frozen balls. When the ice melts, the bubbles burst and sizzle. This phenomenon can also be observed on some shores of the Arctic Ocean. There, the size of the bubbles can reach several times more than balloons. It's a beautiful sight, but it's not safe, since methane ignites when it contacts with air. We're in the coldest place of our journey. It's Antarctica, near the driest desert on Earth. A dry place doesn't mean it has to be hot. It's an area with minimum precipitation. The desert isn't sand and cacti, but a place where almost no living life inhabits. Some areas of Antarctica meet these two criteria. However, in this icy desert, you can notice a tiny lake. Its depth is only a few inches. Technically, it's a pond. But the most amazing thing is that it stays in a liquid form. The temperature here drops to negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit. The pond should be frozen, but this doesn't happen. Don Juan Pond is one of the saltiest reservoirs on the planet. The amount of salt here doesn't allow the water to freeze. Scientists have been studying this lake for more than 60 years, but they still can't find out the exact reason for the appearance of water here. In Utah, in the middle of the desert, there are striped ponds that seem to be something from another world. The color gets even more dramatic, contrasting with the red Moab Desert. The ponds have those stripes because of the evaporation. The more water there is, the more vibrant the blue shades appear. The electric blue color is artificial, though. People add cobalt blue dye, so the water absorbs more sunlight and evaporates faster. As the water disappears, the crystals of salt and potassium are left behind, which are gathered later for chemical production. You don't want to swim in there. Another unusual lake that has its looks thanks to evaporation is Spotted Lake in Canada. In winter and spring, it looks just like a regular lake. But in summer, when the sun gets scorching hot, some water evaporates, but small pools of minerals are left behind. The polka dot spots are usually green, yellow, and bluish. There are no two similar pools. They all have different colors and sizes. Don't get too close here, this place is quite sensitive. Now, if perfection is something you're after, head to Northern Ireland. The place, called the Giant's Causeway, has no extraordinary waters, but the surrounding stones and columns look so smooth and impeccable that it's kind of hard to believe they were created by nature. All those cracks were formed thanks to a volcanic eruption. But the legend has it, the site was made by a mythical giant named Finn McCool. <laughs> he must have been really cool. In Turkey, there's a spectacular site called Pamukkale, which means cotton castle in English. Again, legend has it that giants had something to do with it. 
This time, they left some cotton there to dry, and it later turned into those stunning formations. Scientists kind of disagree with it and claim that it's all about minerals left by the thermal waters. It's up to you who to believe, but there's one undoubtable thing. This place with turquoise thermal water has no look-alike in the world. If you ever pop in this place, don't miss a chance to take a look at ancient Roman ruins left there. Back in 1802, humanity spotted something they never saw before. The pink water. Nope, it wasn't some fancy strawberry lemonade or something. It was an actual source of flamingo pink water. Meet Lake Hillier, located in Western Australia. It's not hard to guess that it attracts people because of its unique color. It never changes and stays pink throughout the year. No giants spotted adding pink dye there, so this time it's all about algae, bacteria, and high salinity. It's totally safe to swim there, but nobody can do that. Regular tourists just can't visit it. Turns out Lake Hillier isn't the only pink water source out there. In Senegal, there's Lake Retva, which looks almost exactly the same. It looks like an extra-large milkshake for the same reasons – high salinity and algae that loves salt. These algae produce red pigments to help absorb sunlight, so the lake color gets even more intense in the dry season. The notorious Thor's Well isn't as dangerous as they say, but it looks a bit scary at high tide. The water fills it from underneath, bubbling and bursting up. Then this vigorous spray of water goes back into that hole, so it seems endless. One more place that depends on tides is Mont Saint-Michel in Normandy, France. The magnificent castle is surrounded by water, but not permanently. Choose the time wisely, it all depends on the moon. The highest tide can be seen 36 to 48 hours after a full moon. Chances are, if you come there at the wrong time, you'll see nothing but a couple of puddles. The Budagaika crater in Siberia looks like a doorway to the neither. It's about a half mile long and nearly 300 feet deep, and it never stops growing. The deeper it gets, the more layers it has. They show what our planet looked like thousands of years ago, as the slumps reveal the used-to-be climates. The crater appeared back in the 60s, and it all started because of rapid deforestation. Trees no longer cast shades on the ground, and it got hotter. The permafrost melted, the soil cracked, and the crater appeared. In the middle of the Atacama Desert, Chile, you can spot a super weird thing. The rocks rise out of the sand right in the shape of a hand. No giant here again, just a sculptor artist who made it. Some desert rocks can even walk. Walking rocks, also known as sailing rocks, can move on their own and leave long tracks across one of the valleys in California. Scientists even installed GPS navigators on some of them, and they showed those rocks can move pretty fast. Many researchers believe it's all about temperatures. At night, the desert almost freezes over, and the sheets of ice formed underneath melt during the day, so the rocks literally slide. Gippsland Lakes, Australia, can glow at night. Bacteria get agitated in the water when the algae bloom, and their movements give that bioluminescent effect. Still, the beauty of red algae bloom is extremely misleading. Red algae contain high levels of ammonia, so think twice before diving in. It's safer to enjoy the scenery on the shore. Uh, just a tip, you should probably do that with your nose closed. The decaying algae doesn't smell like roses. Pew. Water often glows because of bioluminescent jellyfish, and so do caves. In New Zealand, there are glowing worms that emit greenish-blue luminescent light. You can see these guys only in total darkness. These worms are carnivores, and the main reason why they glow is to attract prey, so beware. They also make webs, just like spiders. To see them, head to the Waitomo Glowworm Caves. There are even guided tours. Chocolate Hills? Yummy! The name is explained by colors. Those hills in the Philippines have a range of brown and green colors. Have you seen a green chocolate, though? Mm. This spot has such a sweet nickname because the foliage gets brownish in the dry season. 
The hill shape is so regular that it's often mistaken for being artificial. Still, these are just some uplifted coral deposits, appeared because of rainwater. Just imagine a beach of ketchup spilled for miles and miles and a never-ending portion of french fries. Okay, it's just a dream, but a ketchup red beach exists in real life in China. It's called Punjin, and it's at least 18 miles long. Usually, either giants or algae are responsible for such phenomena. This time, these are algae. They turn red in fall and make this beach one of the most colorful in the world. Good news, it's open to the public, but only a small section. We've seen a red beach, off to red waters. Antarctica isn't only white, it can be red too. In the Taylor Glacier, there's a crimson waterfall coming from a super salty lake. The water is rich in iron, which forms rust when it reacts with oxygen. The water stays liquid even at sub-zero temperatures because of the high salinity. Glass Beach in California is another beach that looks so incredible that many people don't believe it's not made by humans. Well, they're partly right. The glittering, colorful glass stones used to be bottles dumped into the ocean. The waves took these bottles, broke them down, polished them to perfection, and voila, the beach is ready. Another thing created by accident is Fly Geyser in Black Rock Desert, Nevada. An energy company was drilling the soil in search of geothermal water, and boom! Today, it's a scalding fountain of green and red water rising up to 5 feet high. Well, let's play a guessing game. Why is the water colored? It was a random giant walking around who added some dye in there. Or it's the thermophilic algae. Right, it's all about the algae again. In western Venezuela, locals living close to the Catatumba River aren't afraid of lightning because they see it almost every single night within the clouds. It starts at around 7 p.m. and doesn't stop until dawn. The everlasting Catatumbo lightning once stopped for a few months, from January to March 2010. It was probably due to drought. No magic algae in this river, guys. Many believe it's just because of cold and warm air currents meeting around the area. Now, this island may not have incredible natural phenomenon, colorful algae, or even giants, but it has an enormous population of cats which makes it literally the best place in the world, if you like cats. Cat Island in Japan has quite a plain story. Back in time, people would go there in search of silkworms. Mice feed on those worms, so cats were a must there. If tourists come there, they can stay in cat-shaped cabins. Clever. Naturally, no dogs are allowed there. Oh, and if you want to make a donation, you can always feed the kitty.